Welcome back to Sports by GSMZ Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Monday, October 14th. I hope everybody is having a great holiday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. If you are just tuning in, we just went over the winners and losers in the NFL for week six. In this segment, we're going to do the exact same thing, this time taking a look at week seven in college football. But before we get into that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or if you are on YouTube, you can use that super chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Monday, October 14th. But like I was saying, getting into some more winners and losers from a wild weekend in sports, a wild weekend in football. Today, this segment, we turn our attention to college football. And as always, we start off with our number five loser. And this one, stick with me is a little bit of a stretch. You're going to have to listen to me on this one. The SEC is my big loser this weekend, and it's not because of anything that they did. It's not because of they're losing their grip on the sport. You look at the top of the rankings, they are consistently still at the top. Most of their contenders are still in the top 12, which is the metric we're using now to base on the playoffs. Kind of, sort of, not really. The reason the SEC is a loser is because if you look back just three, four weeks ago, you had Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Ole Miss, all in the top seven, all of them in the top. You had more teams, Missouri in the top 10 as well. And now, now you take a look at it and you you in, in Texas, excuse me, Texas at the top. I keep for te- forgetting Texas is a part of the SEC slips my mind. Texas, as, as far as continuing their spot in the top, you just have Texas left. You've been surpassed by the ACC, by the Big Ten, by all of these schools because your teams are cannibalizing each other. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just shows that the SEC is deeper and that it's not just going to automatically get those like five, six, you know, those five, six seeds in the playoffs that they want. For that, they're the number five loser this week. At number five winners, I want to take a very similar approach here and talk about the group of five contenders. I'm, I'm a, I, I don't want to say I'm a, I'm a group of five. Uh, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to say I'm a, I'm a group of five supporter here but i i am i i'm not trying to be a pariah for it uh andre says sco ducks go ducks here yeah they absolutely demolished we'll get to them in a little bit here later on in our list uh but the group of five contenders here they've been really good we've seen teams like boise state be ranked in the top 15 unlv get a chance in the poll army and navy getting chances in the poll now there are that's that's four group of five teams all really, really good. There's a chance we get two group of five teams in the playoffs this year, and that is something that would have been unheard of at the beginning of this season in the history of college football. These group of five top contenders continue to dominate, and I think there's a real shot we get two in the college football playoffs. My number four loser, and again, just got to follow me on this one, Penn State. Penn State is a team that is currently ranked in the top three in the nation. I think that's ridiculous. Penn State against a USC team that lost to Michigan, a USC team that has not looked like a top 30 team in the nation, continues to get this respect just because they're undefeated. And I know for a certain extent it matters. It really does. Winning these games matters. We talk about it. Winning is a skill in and of itself. And Penn State did a great job of that. But this was a game they were supposed to dominate. This was a game, when you take a look at it, Penn State was favored by three and a half points on the road. They go to USC, and they barely escape with a win. Barely. That is not a team that inspires confidence in me. Drew Aller has now started slow in, a, in, a, in almost every single game this season, 
and they need more out of this team. They need more consistency if they want that respect of having that number three next to their name. They have not showed that to me. Along the same lines of talking about the SEC as a loser, my number four winner of this week is the ACC and Big 12, these two conferences that were getting kicked to the curb at the beginning of the season. These two conferences that felt like they were getting pushed out, the Pac-12 just died. Now the SEC and the Big 10 are trying to be these power conferences, these super conferences. The ACC and the Big 12 now hold two, excuse me, four of the top five seeds in the country. At least in my opinion, they do. These teams have been dominant. The top the top teams in the country outside of Texas have all come from the ACC, have all come from the Big 12, Ohio State in there as well. But still, these teams are dominant. These teams are showing that the ACC and the Big 12 are not these push around conferences. They need to get their respect and I think this is a this is a vital year for these conferences to be good because I think the sport of college football only gets worse if we continue to push the power of the Big 10 and the SEC together at least in my opinion. My number 3 loser of the week is Oklahoma. They went up against a juggernaut in Texas that I think is by far clearly the number one team in the nation. Oklahoma, in the Red River rivalry, put up a stinker. They put up a dud. They were supposed to come out there and be effective, at least you know, put up a game in a rivalry game. Instead, they get absolutely destroyed. They lose to Tennessee. They lose to, you know, Texas. That is not a that's not that's not a great start to your that's not a great start to your tenure in the SEC. This is a huge, huge statement game for Texas, and Oklahoma just did not rise to the occasion. They're going to fall fast in a lot of polls. They're out of some. They're out of some polls anyway. Mine, they barely made it. But again, we'll talk about that tomorrow when we do our rankings Tuesday. My number three winner is Vandy Vanderbilt, coming off of a huge win. They were due for a letdown game. They were favored. They were they were favored to lose by two scores against Kentucky, a good Kentucky team, a Kentucky team that pushed Georgia to the limit, a Kentucky team that beat Ole Miss, a Kentucky team that's physical and strong. And you know, Vandy went out there and dominated. They played the style of football that you needed them to play. They won this game on their terms, and they're a team that should get more respect. They're a team that you think about ranking now. This is a very good Vandy team. Diego Pavia continues to dominate basically all season long. This is a dangerous Vandy team, and you don't want to go into a game and underestimate them. This is not your your father's Vandy. At number two, losers, we have Colorado. And it's not because of how they played. It's because of who they lost to injury. Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter was the heart, the soul, the mind of that football team. Travis Hunter was the reason, not the only reason, but was probably the biggest reason this team was competitive. And they still took K-State to the wire. They still showed up. Shadur Sanders showed up with the depleted offense. That defense probably, and I, I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving Travis Hunter a lot of credit here, probably wouldn't have given up at least one of those long touchdowns to Kansas State if he was in the game. Maybe. You don't know how it's going to go, but not playing the whole second half. We saw how K-State opened up that fe- opened up the field, the passing game, without Travis Hunter over there. He is a difference maker, and not having him on the field severely limits Colorado's ability to win football games. It's tough when he plays, you know, 45 out of 46 snaps in the first half. That's what he does every game. You extrapolate that out. He plays almost every single snap of every single game. It's hard to expect him to play the full season. But still, that is a tough loss for Colorado, and they're my number two losers because of it. My number two winners is Oregon. Andre mentioned it earlier. Sko Ducks. Dylan Gabriel. Awesome. Dylan Gabriel showed up when they needed him to show up. He made all the clutch throws, all the big throws that they asked of him to make. That was a great performance. Obviously, we want to talk about a team like Ohio State still playing great football, and they didn't make my list. They didn't make my list of biggest losers, not even Will Howard, even though he made a mistake. 
Oregon comes in. They started off the season slow, almost losing to Ill- almost losing to Idaho, almost losing to Boise State. Now that that almost win, almost lost, really looks a lot better, right? Because they're doing that to everybody. Boise State is dominating, but. This is an Oregon team that has continued to get better every single week. And this was the first, I want to say, real test for Ohio State. And they stood up to the challenge. But Oregon was better. Oregon was better. And I cannot wait for these two teams to meet up in the Big Ten championship game and potentially in the playoff later on. The Oregon Ducks are my number two winner. And that takes us to number one. The number one loser of the week is Utah. Utah coming in with all of this hope. And maybe it should have been Ohio State. Again, Will Howard makes that boneheaded decision at the end of the game. Just loses track of time, and that sucks. It really does. But Utah looked awful Friday night. Utah against an Arizona State team that deserves to get a little bit more respect. It really does. That's a good Arizona State team. But they had Cam Rising back. And Clearly, Cam Rising wasn't healthy. Cam Rising is supposed to be the engine that makes this team go, and they could not get anything going. Almost, I I don't have the stats in front of me, but as far as I can remember off the top of my head, at least three interceptions and a couple of really bad ones. That's not how Utah wants to go. Utah is in trouble. They lost their second Big 12 game, and they are all but out of playoff contention at this point. That is a tough look for them. Utah came in with high expectations, championship expectations, at least Big 12 championship expectations, and they're falling way, way short of that again. They're my number one loser. And that leaves my number one winner, Texas. Texas is the number one winner in a week where coming into it, everyone was expecting, or at least I was expecting, the winner of Oregon, Ohio State to be the number one team in the country, to dethrone Texas. Texas said, nah. Texas said, look at me, you can't take me down. I am the most complete team in the nation. I am the team that everyone looks up to. They put on a show in the Red River rivalry. 34-3, to three, dominant defensively. They put up 34 points against a really good Oklahoma defense. They dominated that game front to back. Quinn Ewers comes in, finally healthy again, shows why he is the starter over Arch Manning, who came in and filled in really nicely, but that's a good example of that. Texas, one of the only teams in the nation, maybe the only team in the nation, that can get injured and still be the number one team, and that is incredible. That is depth you don't see anymore with the state of college football. With the transfer portal, Texas said, no, you're not moving me down. Texas is the number one team in the nation by far. But let me know what you think. Did I miss any winners, any losers? I'd love to hear your thoughts. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we are going to talk all about baseball. The ALCS and the NLCS are in full swing. The Mets already down one nothing, but looks like as far as game two goes, Maybe they take it. Maybe they even up the series. We'll do predictions and much more with all of the baseball playoffs coming up next here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 